Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Economic Empowerment Podcast. Today, it's my honor to introduce you, Josh Silverman, and is a funder, inspiring funder for a lot of companies such as Remediant, Bioman Network, and also Tiger Snap. And can you please introduce a little bit about yourself? Hi, George. Thank you very much for having me on the the, the podcast. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm a computer science major. Uh, from birth, uh, that's I guess where my my bread and butter and and where where all the tech came from. But uh, yeah, I'm a pragmatic guy. Uh, I let uh, entrepreneurship is something I enjoy. Uh, working for people and working rough jobs, which I've done in the past, is as much fun as running your own businesses. Right. Especially when you're doing uh, uh, positive, innovative uh, uh, projects that contribute to society, which I I do take part in. Um, so I have a very eclectic background, more so than your typical lab found biomed uh, right. researcher and innovator yep. and inventor. But I'm a patent author. Um, but uh, yeah, all around good guy. Want to make the world a better place, and uh, that's that, that's that's the New York City based to be uh, uh, in the South, but uh, that that's the brief uh, intro. Thank you, and um, I just want to dive into since you mentioned your background in computer science, how did you get into the biomedical field? Well. Interestingly enough, uh, I've always considered myself a disruptor, whether that be uh, with code, whether that be with bio and medical. Uh, honestly, I don't think we're doing enough uh, uh, in the medical field. Uh, you know, our, our focus is on apps and disposable uh therapies that don't necessarily work. That being said, in my personal life, I've had to be my own doctor, which is uh, something everyone should do these days. Um, and uh, I got to tell you, with my biomedical experience, uh, most of my experience has come from my own personal uh, uh challenges which i had to use my own brain to overcome was the transition difficult would you say uh from computer science to biomedical you know we're all i mean the human body is a machine uh just like the computer uh just like uh i mean of course it's organic but i mean the human body is a machine it, we have organs that perform functions and uh, perform certain tasks and uh, provide substance that allow us to function and thrive and a machine uses a battery and circuitry, etc. So I, I, honestly, I find the transition, uh, especially now, to be even more cross-compatible. So the jump isn't... Uh, uh, the jump is very natural for me, quite frankly. What do you think is the most difficult task when starting your own like remedian biomed company? Well, here's the thing. I mean, as I was mentioning, you know, when we chatted earlier, you know, my specialty field is edentialism, which it deals with uh, people who have lost their natural teeth, dentures, implant patients, or people that can't afford them. And you'd be surprised, more common now to find someone under age 40 uh, who have lost their teeth than someone older than age 40. So like in the Philippines, uh, millennials outnumber senior citizens uh, when it comes to dentures. So it's become a tremendous epidemic and an issue uh, globally. Um, so I'm sorry. Uh, just circling back, I long day, long day at the office. Uh, right. Uh, 
the, the first part of your question, I just, uh, if we could rewind. Yeah. So basically what's the most difficult task when you started the biomed company? Oh, so I mean, I have to tell you starting a company, whether it be a biomedical company uh, or any regulated company always comes with its different challenges uh, on this front. Uh, with Remedian Biomed uh, and my current uh, biomedical uh, company, uh, the most difficult task was convincing people how big this problem was because it's an issue that most people don't talk about until it lands on their lap. So right. uh, beyond that, it, honestly, I you know starting a, a tech company, uh, a biomed company. I, I look at the, I look at it all the same, uh, right? And looking, personally, right? Yeah. And looking from it from a more like a macro perspective of the biomedical engineering field, especially you know in, des in dentistry areas, how do you expect this field to grow? Let's say in the next five years. Uh, specifically the. Dental field in general, or my, the dentalism field, or right, you're right, the dental fields in general, basically. Well, interesting enough, in the last decade, you know, with digital dentistry, uh, the the dental field has uh, has completely changed. Uh, I mean, you, you, I mean, the dental office of twenty years ago would be unrecognizable to the dental office of today. Uh, where 3D printing, dentures, or uh, orthodontic, uh, prosthetics, we're uh, using scanning, intraoral scanning instead of taking impressions, and uh, I mean it's so 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 it's been a tremendous paradigm shift just in the last decade, and uh, it's uh, how do I say this? Uh, it's a tall order. I mean, teeth are important. Uh, I mean, if you don't have them, trust me, it's yeah. it'll affect every system in your body. That's why when you lose a tooth, your body heals naturally. You don't put a band aid on it. I mean, that's you know uh, Darwinism at its finest right there because if it heals itself. Because if you don't eat, you die. Yeah. Um, but uh, as far as growth. I mean, we are we are witnessing in the dental field a transition, like I said, and a meteoric growth and change at the same time uh, because of of just the technology and and what's coming available and population growth and right and a number of other factors. So I think people are going to pay more and more attention to their, you know, dent in the dentistry field. Thus, thus people, you're going to see that, like, you know, rocket growth, like you described in this field. I want to touch on, like, gum guard, because I think it is really important for a lot of athletes to have those gum guards, especially in, you know, sports like, you know, boxing, like basketball and stuff like that. And how have you been advertising like your company for these, let's say, athletes and stuff like that? Well, here, here's the thing, George, and uh, trust me, everyone, uh, you're not the only one when, when they hear gum guard and they see gum guard, it's, it's hard. You know, it, it, people are quick to jump to conclusions and they don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, here, here's the situation. A gum guard, let me give you a very quick example. As you recognize, you know, common right. over the counter uh, sports guard, like you were just talking about. This is not going to work on, let me show, I have a model here. This mm -hmm. is what a person's uh, mouth looks like when their teeth are extracted. This was not meant to work with this. Completely, you have a complete anatomical shift and change once the teeth are removed. However, obviously, sorry for being rudimentary here, but when you have teeth, I mean, it was made for this. Okay, bits, boil and bite. So, I mean, the device uh, is completely different. So the gum guard itself actually will only function 
uh, for people who have lost their teeth or who have implant posts. Um, so it won't even fit on someone that has teeth. So right. I thought we do have a lot of people uh, in sports that have lost their teeth, especially MMA and right. boxers and football yeah. and, yeah. and their customers. Uh, but, you know, we're not a, a sports card company. We're, we're, we're uh, attacking issues uh, that just simply aren't addressed with people uh, that uh, have lost their teeth. It's just, you know, typically like TMJ and sleep apnea, uh, a night guard, uh, for example, they say the ADA says, should I, should I sleep with dentures? The ADA says no. They don't give you an answer, an alternative. Now we have an alternative and we have a night guard that fits the, the anatomy of someone who have someone who has lost their teeth because again a complete change and yep. it lose a lot of height and structure etc and since you have a lot of you know entrepreneurial efforts you know throughout the years what do you think are the most important qualities to be an entrepreneur for those who are just starting out well you know george that's a loaded question and um i mean you have crowdsourcing now uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of outlets, they, a lot of VCs, communications improved. Right. Um, but I mean, you have to have that, uh, you have to have that right idea. I mean, you have to have that plan. You have to have, you know, your reputation and your name is everything without that. Um, I don't know, uh, who would give anyone a, a, a dollar to do any project, um, but honestly, it, it, you know, most, as, as you're aware, most startups, uh, are not successful. Right. It's a gamble. So you really have, it, it really has to be timing, uh, ethics. Uh, you have to know, have the right connections, know people, make sure, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a lot of elements and I happen to have a background in, in, you know, finance as well. So that doesn't hurt. So I've always just had an entrepreneurial drive and spirit inside of me that's pushed me since I've been a kid. And, and uh, so, so I think it comes down to the individual and good leadership, strong leadership, dedication. And you really have to have a strong stomach uh, to be an entrepreneur and, and run a startup. Otherwise, you're dead before you can even start. Because it's a tough game. Yeah, because because currently, like I think there is definitely um distrust for younger generations to start up companies, and there's always that stigma that you know, let's say Gen Z are not as trustworthy as previous generations. And for us that wants to be an entrepreneur from a young age, what do you think are some skills that we need to develop? Well. You know, Gen Z, you know, and having friends and, you know, relatives, you know, who are Gen Z, you guys have not, and gals have not gotten uh, the, the environment and atmosphere has been, has shifted so much in just, in just the last 20 years with the advent, the internet, open source, uh, accessibility to information, et cetera. Um, and quite frankly, you know, you have outlets like TikTok, which aren't helping very much with uh, innovation and right. uh, and growth. So, so it really takes someone... With, with a strong constitution, the dedication to study, to not get caught up in, you know, the nonsense you see online and, uh, you know, just trying to get hits on your, on TikTok and YouTube. Right. You really need to dedicate. And, and I, I, in my opinion, you need to look back on old school methodologies that have, have worked for, for hundreds of years and, uh, in entrepreneurship and, and not, uh, I think there's a quick jump for a lot of Gen Zers to think they could just 
snap their fingers and start a business. Um, but um, I think the education has gone downhill. It's made it harder for for your generation to to to, to start things. But then again, you've had a ton of benefits, so it's a trade off. But right now, um, at the current time, uh, it, it it really. Gen, Z, I think the Gen Z is in, in a in a very odd position because, uh, you know, Gen X are like me, and Boomers they they just I mean they had a big head start, um, and you know population growth and the ideas out there are just I mean nonstop I mean so to get your foot in the door. Uh, today compared to 30 years ago, 20 years ago, I mean, you're fighting against 5,000 guys instead of 500 or 100. You know, it's just so, so you have to work harder. You have to really have something that hits and makes sense and that's innovative and useful because um, uh, there's a lot of repetitiveness and, um yeah, so I would be, you know, look back on traditionalism and maintain reputation, try to stay away from from the gimmicky stuff that we see online. I'm not, you know, I'm a fun guy, don't get me wrong, but there's a time and a place. So that that's the biggest hurdle I see uh, with Gen Z right now, yeah, in entrepreneurship. Really yeah, with, uh, you know, integration of you know, internet, um a lot of people's attention span has been shortened, so they cannot be focusing on specific stuff for you know ex an extended period of time, which I think is pretty necessary if you want to be an entrepreneur. So like you mentioned, going back to the old school methodologies for some is really useful. And also I like how you mentioned the competition is more fierce because of, you know, different factors like population growth and, you know, open source internet and, Basically, you're competing with the whole world instead of just competing within your local area. And throughout your entrepreneur, well said. And throughout your one entrepreneur, you know, journey, what has been the hardest for you? Like your hardest time, your hardest like challenge, and how did you like combat it? I got to tell you, this recent, uh, yeah, as far uh, Gumguard, uh, which you know, is it, it isn't just, you know, one night guard, it, it, you know, it, it serves a plethora of different purposes and multiple different designs. Uh, but uh, that's a tough one. Uh, give me one more time, George. Like, I'm sorry, like, what, I, I got what, lost in like, thought. You made me think hard on that one. Like, like within your journey of entrepreneurship, like these many companies, like twenty plus years of experience, what has been the most difficult moment? Would you say in doing entrepreneurship? Actually, okay. So that being said, to round it up, you know, with this, with the lockdowns we had to deal with in uh, 2020, 2021. I mean, that was my launch window. So hands down, uh, I shouldn't have survived that. If you if you look at the business by the book, but we we got through it and we thrived. Um, so adapting uh, to a post pandemic uh, environment uh, has been my biggest challenge in my entire career, hands down. Um, a long list of, of, of issues that I, I, I can rattle off from workforce to uh, just people want to run everything from Zoom, not come into the office and elaborate. Uh, but, but absolutely, it, 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 this transition from uh, uh, during the lockdowns into how 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 the workforce behaves now and how we've adapted that was the biggest challenge in my career right i think overcome. the launch windows i think this is really interesting because it's basically when COVID has just 
like when COVID has been like the most rampant, where where everyone is like locked up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of businesses I, are not surviving. I mean, George, I was in LA, uh, you know, and I started development on this product in 2016. I, you know, came back, you know, I've always been by coastal in New York and LA. I came back to New York in uh, August 2019 because uh, that's where my main office is and uh, wanted to get into the office. We we're going to, ready to do a raise. Uh, pitch decks were ready. Uh, uh, and then this event happened, which in my lifetime is. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, there's no words for it. So, yeah, it was, timing is everything. It's something, words to live by. However, you know, thankfully for me, you know, we came out of it. We made the best of our time and we ended up learning more about our product and uh, and what we could do. And uh, we actually thrived uh, as far as learning and and expanding on this new invention. Um, uh, unfortunately, it was difficult to do, uh, uh, you know, we started our testing in 2018. So with our labs and offices padlocked in New York City, right. uh, mouth guard device wasn't the best pick, if it, you know, especially for, for those years, but we got through it and, um, Interesting enough, we're about to go live on Amazon uh, as a brand central uh, property uh, February 1st. And uh, we, we haven't even announced yet. We've been in market testing. So technically, right. we're not even live yet. Right. Um, so having, you know, we're, you know, I've broken all traditions uh with this company and that's something you need to do with entrepreneurship you know the rules just don't apply by the book you need to be creative so uh we hung in there we lost a lot of people never saw so much turnover in my life but the core team is still here we have some extremely talented physicians surgeons and uh dentists and uh you know, employees, you know, high caliber, still standing. A lot of people fell by the well, uh, wayside, never saw so much turnover uh, in my career uh, as well. But again, people just couldn't stand it out and it, 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 extraordinary times. So not, not, not anything you can make comparison to. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. cast iron stomach is something you really need. To yeah, I just really want to, like say like it's really like great that you have survived through the like COVID period especially like for a startup as well because you see those you know companies that have been running for years getting shut down during COVID times in oh yeah in all industries and and like I like how you mentioned that like the workforce and you need new adjustment like to adjust to this new normal post-COVID period because it seems like everyone has been shifted toward more of an online focus and I think your expertise of computer science definitely helps a lot with that because it's basically really important as absolutely as 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 we have mentioned. And also like I, I like how, like I remember you said about like when you're starting a company, you need to find the right time. And COVID was probably beyond be honest, not the definitely the most correct time to basically start off things. And somehow no. it's <laughs> somehow that like you have pulled through with, you know, great effort to make, you know, the company, you know, thrive in the current, current time. And how have you adjusted to like, if, even if it's not the right time, how did you guys survive? Well, look, and I mean, it was, it was rough. I'll tell you that much. I mean, for, first of all, you know, we're, we, we have uh, two, two patents granted already. Our third is on the way. Uh, so I had a, a lot of IP work happening uh, and plenty of uh, research to do still. Uh, we we're fine tuning our messaging, et cetera. Um, but uh, I mean, again, it, it, it just, 
it was the worst luck in the world and the best luck in the world. I mean, uh, it, 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 we couldn't have a product launch in 2020, 2021 right. for a mouth guard device. It just wasn't going to happen. So back to what you said about having the internet and the power of the internet to communicate. We did uh, uh, our second part of testing all through, believe it or not, private Facebook groups, which there's you know a few million people hiding out and and communicating because they can't get proper care and they need advice, etc. And we put together some A/B testing groups and we conducted all of our uh, second round testing online uh, thanks to the internet. It wouldn't have been possible otherwise. And I think like has been like the most important thing I think in the biomedical field is basically launch a product and also develop that product, you know, retain the talent. How do you retain those talent after the COVID time? Because people are so, so much online and then like, it's way different for like, you know, human resources to see how, how people have been shifting their, like shifting their skills, skill sets and stuff like that. And, you know, like colleges are getting, you know, a lot of people, you know, just don't go to school. They just basically, oh, let's, you know, just sleep through Zoom classes. And then, you know, yeah. and it's harder to find people with talent, right? It is. I mean, you know, I, I got to tell you, it, I've always had a talent of team building and finding the right people. I have a great network. I mean, I don't need LinkedIn or the internet. Give me a rotary telephone and a pencil and a paper and i could get it done uh through through my contacts because you know i've maintained a good reputation and, and i've kept it honest and you only have one chance uh you know to lose your reputation and it's game over but um uh it's uh, you can't do everything through a zoom screen yeah uh you're not mm -hmm. going to but and a lot of people just have that inclination that it could happen, and that's been damaging. But I got to tell you, uh, the the people, some of the the people I have on uh, from 2016 and 2017, for example, my original team members, I have sur uh, 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 chief of surgical uh, from uh, Cedar Sin hospitals like Cedar Sinai. Um, some, you know, talent, really, really top of their game, talented staff who, who saw the vision, who understood, okay, this isn't going to be an, an overnight hit. We're going to have to, especially with the situation going on in 2020, 21. And, uh, they had to wait it out. Uh, you know, once the lockdown ended, I got to tell you, I lost most of my, uh general support staff like marketing and you know that type of stuff but honestly it was it was pretty easy to replace uh, on that front um but uh i find having a loyal staff um that really believes in in what you're doing not just a job is paramount to to launching a successful product and business oh, um yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um hope I answered that in full uh, for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And la lastly, like, what is one message that you want to share with people who are trying to start up, you know, or just, you know, in general, just really interested in becoming an entrepreneur? One thing. Well, if uh, if you don't have the constitution to ride it out, whether that's going to be six months and you're going to, you think you're going to get a quick hit and you're going to have an IPO in nine months. This might not be for you. This isn't crypto, right. uh, <laughs> you know, but look, it, miracles happen. But if, if you don't have the stamina to stick it out for four to seven to 10 years, possibly, uh if it's worth it um you you might want to think about pursuing another line of work um it, it just takes dedication uh there's going to be a lot of pain you're going to deal with a lot of uh drama and nonsense unfortunately 
Uh, you just have to navigate. You have to navigate it. You're going to take some hits on the chin, but that's all goes back to what I said about having a cast iron stomach and having the right mindset to right. really be strong to power a company through uh, from start to 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 to, to finish and yep. and beyond. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that would be the one point I would say would be extremely important. Also, personal communication, in, meaning face to face, human interaction. Yeah. Not 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 only great to see you in a Zoom. Yeah. But I guarantee you, if we're working on a project and we're in a lab together, we're gonna get a lot more done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> on the collaboration front, I agree with that a hundred percent. Thank you so much for coming on this podcast. Thank you. I think it would be really valuable for other people to hear about, you know, these type of things that go behind the scenes instead of just seeing the glory side of entrepreneurship. Thank you. George, thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yep. Best of luck. And yep. Thank you so much. Stay warm. Thanks yep. so much Thank for you. having me. Yeah. Hi. Bye.